continuing this great discussion with the coach, Brian Gimolero, women's volleyball, Long Beach State. Brian, is, is the goal to win always, or is it to make the team play as good as it can, and then if the other team is better, so be it? Yeah, the goal is never to win. Everybody. The everybody, goal is never to win. No, you, you, the, the idea is that if you do things right and you believe in what you do and it you master happen. what you do, it will happen. So if you talk about winning, then it's, it's, it loses what you're doing. It's the wrong you, focus. If, yeah, and you miss what you're doing. You're missing the game. The, the, the beauty of competing is competing, not, in, not just winning. You win for an outcome of what you do. And, and, and it's, it's more execution. The better you execute, uh, the better chance you have of winning. So the idea is to focus on execution. execution. You can never control what happens on the other side of the net. Somebody might play poorly. Uh, is it that a great win if you play poorly and they play poorly? It, there's something lost. It's great to win the match, but at that execution level, it's not very satisfying. So you have won games where, let's say, the team played not so well. Right. And, and you were not particularly happy. You, you take the win because yeah. it's, it's in the column, but, yeah. but you weren't pleased with the way the team performed and you let them know. Of course. You, you, can't, you, you have to focus. You have to remain focused on the purpose, and the purpose is to execute. And anytime anyone on the team does something to help the execution, they need to be applauded for it. So if... if there has to be satisfaction in doing things as a team and doing things well. Now, it's difficult on the opposite side of that is to execute very well and to not be successful. But that rarely, rarely, rarely happens. Really? Yes. If the team is executing well, it yeah. wins. I believe that we know what we're doing. I believe that the players can feel confident in the schemes and the, the technique and the tactical aspects that we will be successful if we get So you can't remember many games where the team really executed at their level and, and you were not ultimately victorious. Rare, very rare. It's rare. Yeah. Fascinating. Uh, players get into slumps mm -hmm. in every sport. How do you handle a player who's in a slump? Well, you it's... Pull them it, out of the yeah. lineup? No, you earn, you earn your spot in, 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 in practice, so... You earned your spot in practice. Pulling someone out of a lineup is is, is not. I don't. I don't believe in it. Uh, you earn your spot. Now work through it. Now the, so for, you leave them in the game. Yes. Amateurs. Amateur. These are amateurs, not professionals. So a slump is more of a loss of a conf, confidence or an inability to develop. Has yet developed a skill that's necessary. So you make note of that skill that is. Um, they're unable to perform, and you work on that to help them for the next time they're facing that stimulus, and you and you so you can build their confidence when they face that again. And does the lineup change from week to week based on the practice preceding the the day of the game? No, uh, you're you're going to earn your spot over a period of time, and you have a bad practice. That's not. There's no such thing in my mind as a bad practice. Somebody might practice well and push you, which is which is necessary and expected. That's expected out of everyone. Everyone is to push each other and then support each other. But the idea of you losing your spot because of one day of practice has nothing to so do with it. So you build up a reservoir of goodwill, yes, as of it course. were. Yeah, you trust. You, you trust. learn to trust. I mean, you show that you trust them. Uh, as long as people are responsible, you reward them with your trust. And, you, and, and for me to break their trust would be really unfair to suddenly... Trust is a very fragile thing, and to pull that away from somebody is very difficult to get back. Plus, you take away their sense of confidence. In our next segment, we're going to see how these principles relate to life in general. Stay with us. Returning with this great conversation with the coach, Brian Gimolero. Brian, one of your Coaches that really inspired you, Bud Wilkinson had a saying. <laughs> yeah, Bud Wilkinson was an old football coach in the 1950s in Oklahoma, and he, he set some records, but I, I don't know if anybody really remembers it this time. But he used to have this saying that I always liked. That it was, uh, all running backs look the same without blocking. <laughs> and I think that it pertains to everything, to yeah. all of us, no matter how good a player you are, you, know, you, you better have a team around you. And no matter what type of business you have, if you're not, if you don't have the support around you that's necessary, 
uh, you're not going to look very good. So the re one of the relevances of sports to life is this importance of teamwork and depending on others and uh, submerging your own ego, I guess, into the team. Oh, I, 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 volleyball is a very unique sport because it's one of the it's the only sport I know where you can't catch the ball. You have to keep it moving, and you can't. What about soccer? Well, you can't. You can dribble it to yourself. Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> you you can't you can't catch it, and you have no glove or bat to hit it. So <laughs> it's your body, which is a coach's dream, and then uh, uh, the other part, not being able to multiple touch it. You can't rebound it, dribble it, and shoot it. You have to give it to someone else. And then the team becomes a, the ah, ultimate fact. You it, every play has to go to a different not, person, a different person, or a shot. Yep, every play, as opposed to yep. a guy dribbling down and yep. going. Yeah. So the beauty of it, is, and the other part about it, is you have to rotate, so you can't stay in the same position. So because of that, it, it's intriguing for a coach. It's a very small area you're playing in with six people in it, and so it, it's it's the team and the teamwork and the execution because. If you watch the game, you can see that you can instantly go from offense to defense and back to offense. And so the, the, the teamwork and the, the focus and the, uh, um, the intricacy of movement is, 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 um, is really exciting to me. And it really brings about teamwork and, the, and all the things that go with teamwork. And it's really quite complex and there's a way to do it right yes. and not do it right. Now, do other coaches have different... I mean, in football and other sports, there are different strategies. Or right. do, do most volleyball coaches believe the same type of execution works? Well, I think that, I think that there's patterns in all sports. Uh, in football right now, you'll see uh, college teams running similar offenses or similar defenses. In pro football or pro basketball, they, they, they get in a trend and people copy each other. And that same is true in volleyball. But I like the idea of looking... The geometry of the game never changes. The angles never change. The body is an instrument that's mechanically moves certain ways. And how can you use those, those ideas, the, the absoluteness of the geometry and of the angles and the, and, the, and the flexibility of the way the body performs? So how can we use that in a way that's different? How, how can we constantly develop a way? I always believe that Doing things over and over and over again the same way is very important to become creative. So once you do it over so many times, I think that suddenly you can see something. You look at it all the time and hope that there's something you don't see. And eventually there is. And if you find that something, mm -hmm. is, is your opponent, opponent coach going to see what you're doing? Yeah. There's no secrets here. They see what you're doing yeah. and they can copy it too. So you yeah. can't keep this stuff yeah. secret. We're, we're, we're lucky. I think we're fortunate. I think it's flattering that many, many things that we've developed over the years have been done by others. Have spread. Yeah. And I want to, I, I, it, it, I'm very curious about what, what's next and what we can do next. Are the teams getting better through time? Are your teams and other teams better today than 10 years ago? Does it keep going up through time? Uh, uh, that's a tough one because I like it. I, I would love to say yes. I want to say yes because I think sports need to do that. The, the young w women that play are bigger and stronger, but the game, uh, the skill level hasn't improved. And they, uh, the technical and tactical aspects aren't accelerating at the rate I'd like to see. Does the team normally get better as the season progresses? That's a must. That's a must. Each game should be better than the preceding. Well, it, improvement always isn't game by game, okay, but uh, the chart we, should be going up, yes. Yeah. And, and the key is, uh, for all players and coaches, is to be your best at the end. Not to peak, but to improve. Uh, again, they're not pros. They don't peak. You know, they don't go up and down. It's a, co it's a continual growth, and the idea is to grow until the end of the season where you're at your best. And finally, before we pause, mental toughness. We hear about that. How mm -hmm. important is mental toughness? Well, I, I think I, it's, it's a key. First you, have to, first, you have to understand. First, the coach has to paint, paint the picture of what they want to see. Second, the, they have to show players over and over again how you get to that and remind them of what, we want, what the picture looks like. And if you continually do that and are disciplined in doing it and, fo and, and focused all, every minute in practice of doing that, 
then you can have the, then if it's the beginning of the me mental discipline you need to be successful. Okay, we'll be back with the remaining portions of our show. Stay with us. Welcome to McKenna's on the Bay, where fine dining is complemented with a breathtaking view. McKenna's is a restaurant of incredible ambiance, providing service and cuisine with style, class, and romance. The menu offers a variety of appetizers, serious seafood, prime steaks and oyster bar, and specialty entrees for either lunch or dinner. McKenna's on the Bay features patio dining, nightly entertainment, and two banquet facilities. No matter what your occasion, McKenna's on the Bay is like being on vacation. Join us today at McKenna's on the Bay. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember, Polly's. 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. those who are closest to you, from our family to yours. McCarty's Jewelry, since 1932. How do you like your chances the rest of the week? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Horace Greeley famously said, go west, young man, go west. Brian grew up in Utica, New York, came out here as a 17-year-old, enrolled in Long Beach State, and the rest, as they say, is history. So, Brian, we're glad you came west. Uh, Art, thank you, and it's always nice talking to you. Thanks so much for, again, joining us. And thank you at home for being our guest. Please join us next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by Southern California Edison, the Press-Telegram, and remember, Straight Talk is viewable worldwide 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.